So this is going to be my first attempt at making a charcuterie board. How hard could it be? So ever since I started woodworking, I've always wanted to make a cutting board and I just never had the right tools or I didn't have the time or I didn't have the equipment. And I thought to myself, now is as good a time as ever to just get this project knocked out and let's try something that's maybe a little bit easier like a charcuterie board. So I set out and I picked up some cherry. It was a nice little piece of cherry and it didn't have a lot of defects in it. And I thought this might be the one. So I started to mill it down and I used my jointer jig to get a straight edge on it. Then I ran it through my table saw to straighten out the other side. I did a little work on the planer and then before you know it, I had exactly what I needed. I picked up some templates off of Etsy that I used to get the general shape of the board I was looking for. But I think I could have just done it by hand, which I've done after I completed this one. You know, this one built up a lot of confidence in me. And I think this is the best way to get into it if you're interested. So there's many ways to actually cut it out. You know, I was using the bandsaw, but I'm also using the jigsaw. And there's just certain tasks that one's better than the other. I mean, the bandsaw is normally better, but I do like my jigsaw too. And at this point, I thought it was the best idea for me to waste as much double-sided tape as possible. And it actually did its job. I just, I didn't need to use quite so much. Here, I've seen quite a few people do this trick. Uh, maybe not the same clamping situation, but I thought, hey, this would work. I don't have a router table. This is going to work. Let me slow the speed down. And then that happened. So after I changed my shorts, uh, I came back and I had to regroup. And this time I didn't use quite as much tape as I did the last time, and I didn't have a problem. But I thought this time maybe I would route it from above and not pretend that I have a router table, because obviously I don't. Once I lined it up where I wanted it, the operation went pretty smooth. So I'm using a flush trim bit there and then I'm following that up by using my belt sander. This is going to smooth and get all of those rough uh, tool marks off and get me ready for sanding. Next, it came time for the finger hold or the hanging hole. I'm not even sure actually what you call it, but for my purposes, I turned my drill press down as low as possible. And a trick we picked up is if you see chips, then you have it at a decent speed. If you see sawdust, then you're definitely going too fast. And you're probably also seeing smoke at that point. At this point, all the sanding is for the most part done. It's time for the round over. And then with just a little bit more sanding, I lied. Here's me playing around showing you how little bit of pressure you're supposed to put until I almost round over the edge. But it's a good thing I have on my soft sanding pad. I know you guys are worried, but I do have on a mask here. There's a lot of dust going on here. Here's my reverse CA technique where I hit it with a little bit of activator first, then I add the CA glue, then I hit it with a little bit more activator. You'd be surprised. Sometimes the activator allows you to use less CA glue than you originally were going to to fill whatever crack or hole you're dealing with. So if you haven't tried it before, it's worth a try. I made six boards out of this piece of lumber and some of them are filled with black CA glue and some I filled with a lighter color CA glue. I think it's just personal preference. Honestly, the cherry looks good with either. I mean, I'm partial to the black on darker woods, but I thought the cherry looked really good with black and clear CA glue alike. 
this point it's time to water pop it and you want to water pop it so that the fibers don't stand up the first time this thing hits water when you go to wash it in your sink and i actually would advise water popping it twice so that's actually what i did and i don't show it in the video but i water popped it sanded it then i water popped it again because more fibers did stand up and this is the best part this is when you're getting close to the end and you're applying your finish I just kind of had a little fun with it. I'm using some walrus oil here and I'm smoothing it out. I don't know if you guys pay close attention, you can see my technique here. I'm pretending I'm cooking uh, some sort of chicken parm or something. I got my clean hand and I have my wet hand because that right hand does not want to get involved at all. It still needs to pick up that bottle. I mean, don't judge me. I think that's just me coming up with something in my head. In fact, let me know in the comment section below what kind of weird things do you do when you're working in your shop. These are the kind of things that keep me going as I'm working in a shop and it just makes sense in my head at the time. And then when I say it out loud, I'm like, well, that was weird. So I let the walrus oil set for just a little bit and then I came back and I wiped off all of the excess until it was dry. I think next time around I'm going to switch to a more cotton cloth than these towels that I use. I mean it worked but I think I could have found something that was a little bit better. And the last and final step is to apply some wax. This is going to seal it. And it's going to make it so that it has a nice feel to the touch and it's going to keep it over time and you can actually apply this as time goes on the application method is the same as the oil you wipe it on and then you buff off the excess but with that guys we're done this was a fun project i don't know why i waited so long to do it Chigurh boards are kind of cool because you can do whatever you want to do with it. They're not just meat and cheese platters. Anybody who knows me knows I have quite the sweet tooth and my wife knows me. So here's my platter with all my favorites. What would you put on your board?